nowadays, when you go to the shows, you see these guys, they're selling you these fancy tools. And last week we had a demo, and a lot of it was a sales presentation. You know, because you're selling a machine and selling a service. But a lot of these things, you know, we, we think that they're marvelous. We think that they're magical. That we're going to buy this CNC machine, and it's going to make all this stuff for us. But it's not. It's just a tool. And that's, that's, the, whole, that's the point. Uh, the other point I want to make is that when we, you guys have an advantage when it comes to these tools, because you're woodworkers. I've been reading these forums now for years, and all, and all these CNC forums, laser forums, by the way, too, I've got, I, sh I should tell you, too, I'm, uh, I've got a shop bot, and I've had a shop bot for at least 12 years, maybe longer. Uh, a little over a year ago, I got a laser, and that's my background in this stuff. I'm not an engineer. Uh, I'm self-taught on all these things. So we got a whole room of engineers here, and uh, you guys look at things a little bit differently than I do. I'm just kind of a practical guy. But anyways, when you go to buy these things, you go to the shows, and they're, they're going to show you all these things you can do. They're not so easy. Uh, the practical woodworking thing, I've had, I've, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I've had uh, a lot of things going on this week. I'm kind of, my thoughts are kind of, uh, I'm not normally like this. Uh, well, Ralph, I, I might glad you gathering your thoughts. <clears throat> it's been my observation, I learned the hard way, it's 95% software, and then the machine just gives you all sorts of interesting right. opportunities. You and know? and uh, you, have, you have to be able to, willing to learn the software. You have to be willing to learn how to draw. Uh, yesterday I saw on one of the forums uh, uh, with Sumill Creek. The guy said, well, how do I take it from paper and make it into wood? And you, you got to learn that software. And that's what controls the machine. Uh, so basically, you guys have an advantage because you're woodworkers. You, you know how to work wood. I, back to a lot of the people you see in these forums, they're, they're brand new to it. And they're, well, I bought this machine and it's two by two. How do I get the wood cut down to fit the machine? Where do I buy the wood? You know? Uh, one of the things that you read about is chip load. And you want to be making chips instead of sawdust. Most people don't know the difference. You guys know what a chip is. You know what sawdust is. There's a difference. And they make a big thing when you're learning CNC about chip load. And that's these engineers figure this stuff out. The speed, the all the, the different things that get involved with it. But you guys naturally know how to work wood. You know what a shaving is, you know? You know what a sharp tool is. And you'd be surprised, a lot of people, they just don't know this stuff. Another big thing that you guys have an advantage of is you know how to fix mistakes. You know, <laughs> you're using a router, you're gonna get, you're gonna get Terra. You're, uh, you're gonna hit the end grain, no matter what you're doing, because it's a little tiny router bit. And you'll see on the forums, these people, they, uh, the edges are all rough. Why is that? Well, let's tear up. You guys know how to fix it. You know what to look for. Uh, most people that do these things, that buy these machines, are buying this dream. Sometimes I, I, I look at it, it's like they're selling a business in a box. They're trying to, uh-oh, should have used it. They're selling a, a, they're selling a business in a box. You know, they're gonna, you're going to buy that machine, and that machine's going to make you all kinds of money. And people, they go for this stuff. Should have used that a little, little sooner, I guess. Uh, now we've got to go all through all this again, I hope not. Uh, so anyways, you guys have a big advantage. Uh, that being said, the, these machines, they're better suited to man-made materials, MDF, plastics. Uh, sheet goods because wood is wood and wood you get tear up and so if you're gonna make things you have yeah you oh no this is not good Let's see what's oh. Windows update <laughs> just keep talking yeah we're we only have 18,000 things to do here and four. <laughs> the 
So anyway, uh, what I was going to do is I was going to run through this PowerPoint and then kind of open it up to you guys, uh, whatever you want to know, and I'll try to answer your questions. So maybe we're going to have to do that backwards, I guess. Um, most of you guys are, a little, are more sophisticated than uh, the regular group. So without, I'm sorry. I was going to say, other than, other than the, the, the known, what's the big difference between CNC, basically, I'm going to call it mechanical, versus, versus the laser? What, what can you do differently? Okay, uh, the, obviously the, the, the router uses a bit, and the laser just uses light. In the laser, you're burning everything. And the laser basically is good for cutting out things and engraving things. But the caveat is when it's, when it's cutting out things, you can't hold tolerances. Uh, you're, uh, when you're cutting out things with a router, you get a nice straight router bit, or you've got a tapered bit. You're, you know, you're in control of that. When you use the laser, the laser is a beam. And I just uh, kind of show you you know, it'll start with it like a, t uh, always going to have a tube. Some of them are, are glass, some of them are, are RF tubes. <clears throat> the beam comes out of that laser tube. It goes to a mirror. And the mirror is, is kind of at an angle. So the beam is going to, goes into this first, first mirror, and now it goes into some moving mirrors. You got one here, this will be on your carriage, the, 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 uh, the tube is stationary, this mirror is stationary. You've got another mirror that now is, you've got a frame that is moving, your X and Y axis. All these machines have an X and Y axis. X is generally your longest axis, and Y is generally your short axis. This is for the laser, and it holds over to, to the, uh, the CNC too. And now, so this, this mirror is moving, then you'll have another mirror, that's going to direct that beam down to the, the work. And it has a lens in it. So that beam is coming out of that laser, going to this mirror, to this mirror, over to this mirror. It hits this lens. And the lens is kind of like this. And that beam is coming through it. And what happens is that lens, it focuses that beam. And it focuses it like this. So you've got one spot where that beam is focused, where that, that light comes through it. And that's, that's the sweet spot. And if you're engraving, you want that sweet spot right on top of the, of the wood. But if you're cutting the wood, like, oh, do this real quick. And we'll see what we're going to get here. Uh, so what happens is, there's different lenses you can buy, and they have different uh, focal lengths. Generally, you use about a two inch is kind of the uh, the normal lens. But some of the lenses they've got a shorter focal length, and some have a longer focal length. So what you have, what you got going on here, is you got a bigger sweet spot with a longer lens. So you can cut a a, a, a thicker piece, but always with uh, with a laser. If you got your work piece, and you're gonna the the uh, the kerf is gonna be like this. It's gonna be angled. So as with a laser, you're kind of you're limited to accuracy. The thinner the piece, the easier it is. But once you get up to thicker pieces in wood or, or plastics, doesn't matter. You, this is the, the curve that you're going to have. So it's harder to make things that fit, make pieces that fit out of with a, using a laser. When you're talking about thicker, what, what scale are we talking about here? Uh, well, we're talking here. We're talking home workshop. So we're talking eighth inch on up to half inch, probably. Okay. Okay. There are bigger lasers, industrial lasers. Uh, uh, Jack has got a friend, I don't know if, um, Jack uh, Morse, he always has this Baltic birch, 
Don knows about it. Oh, yes. he, gives, he gives it away to some people. But he gets it from a company that makes uh, uh, some kind of dyes for cutting cardboard or something. Uh, yeah, they use it as a mold to make things, and that's their excess. I don't think he's gotten any in years, however. Well, anyways, he, he gets it from uh, uh, Bob. We're going to have to start all over here if you want to. Yep. With that. Uh, um, so, with uh, veneer, that would be less of a factor, right? But it's still a big factor. Yeah. Uh, I've got some examples here that I can show you with. Uh, this is kind of an example that I brought. It's all going to fall apart. But this is supposed to, these are little files you download. And this is supposed to be, you, you go to these shows. Again, we go back to the, you know, they're selling their dream. Selling you a dream. And they, oh boy, you can make this stuff with, and we'll, put, we'll pass this around. And these are, are pretty good for the average person, these joints, but they're not for you guys. Okay? They'll fall apart. But that's, that's done with a laser. But you get wood thicker than that, and it's harder to do. So that's kind of one of the, the things, that, oh wow, the amazing stuff here. <laughs> you can do this with this machine. Just buy this machine, you can do that, and you can sell a million of those to, to whoever. <laughs> I don't know who. Uh, you get into the bigger wood. I've got a, an 80 watt laser, and that's pretty big for a home shop. Paul's, yours is a 45. 45. Anybody else have a laser or a CNC? Don's got a carve, right? Yeah. Anybody else have anything? <coughs> no? Okay. Anyways, these are, you can, this really pronounced on this, and this is not acceptable to me. I'll pass this around, but you can see that there's an angle here on the way wood is cut. And, and on this, it's all burnt. That's not, you know, what do you do with this? You can't make anything out of it. You can cut it out. You can do it like, a, you know, for scroll saw type, type work where it's not really, you don't know who's going to know if you're not on the line, right? If you're cutting letters, everybody will know. Straight, straight line. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is if you're a little bit off the line, nobody yeah. knows. You're going to sand that. But anyway, so you, you can see, even on this eighth inch piece, you can see the top is got, it's, it's kind of, it's tapered. So I'll pass these around, you can see that. And all that is called by the, the uh, eighth oh. That's, yeah, because you're burning it. You're burning that wood away. No, but you're burning it at an angle. Yeah, because that's the way it's focused. The sweet spot's moving. Right. Could you compensate for it then? Well, what you try to do, yeah, what you try to do is you want to, you want your workpiece, if you're cutting it, if it's this thick, you want it here, so you're going to, you're going to change wherever that beam is focused and try to keep it in the middle of that cut. That's what I do. Is that what you do, Paul? Yeah, when you can, depending on the thickness of the wood. Depending on what it is. Just, uh, does the longer focal length lens limit your heat? It limits the power. It, 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 it limits on what the, the shorter focal length concentrates the power of that beam. So depending on uh, the power of your laser, it'll work or won't work. That's why most of them are only two inch. Some of them are inch and a half. Inch and a half is good for doing... Uh, 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 marquetry because it has a, a much smaller beam. The, also, the width of the beam is is a little wider or narrower according to the lens. The shorter the lens, the beam is a little bit uh, narrower. You talked about the, the wood burn being a negative factor. Does that carry over into non-wood uh, pieces? Yeah. On the, the burn? Yeah. I don't understand. What the, the edge burn that you were showing on the letters? Is it still on what major? pronounced depends on what it does. I mean, well, it depends, what, depends on what you cut it. You can cut leather okay. with a laser. This one, this is die stamped. I didn't bring one that was cut, but you can cut it. But you get a black edge. Uh, this is just engraved leather. Uh, some, pla some materials like plastic really lend themselves to the laser. The, this is something I make for my son. He has a, a little company that sells slot car products, parts, and fixtures and things. And this is acrylic. 
And I used to make these for him with a router. And I would have to change the bit. I'd have, I'd have one bit to cut it out, then I'd have one bit to engrave it. And it took quite a bit of time. Uh, when I got the laser, he says, well, why don't we just change the design and, and make them like this. So uh, this is engraved with the laser. This, is, this one is a, uh, just an experiment uh, because the focal link, we get to the focal link, for engraving we want that, that focus part to be right on top of the surface. But for cutting, I want the focal link to be in the middle. So with this one, I was kind of... Uh, What's, what's my best thing? So I got one set up, I put the piece of plastic in and run it. And I don't have to, have to do two things. But again here, you can see on the plastic that angle for the curve. Which don't get burned edge with plastic. No, that no, melts. Play, they cut plastic real nice. One other thing too, with plastic, I want to show you this. With plastic, uh, last week Bruce was talking about lithopanes, carving lithopanes. But if you take, well, Almost got a light right here. You see what happens when that light hits it? Mm -hmm. It really makes that, that engraved portion stand up. Mm -hmm. Now you can do the same thing with the router, but that's what Bruce was talking about last week with lithopanes. And you carve it from the back, it's opaque, and that's what you see with the light on it. So that that was is that carved from the back? No, that's carved from the front. That's what I thought. So that one is a compromise. That engraving is not as, as the best it could be. And the cut is, it's pretty good. But I, I wanted to try to do all with, with one time. Yeah. So, you saw the average is And the same holds true with you when you're doing with a router. You're going to use, you might have different bits for doing, you know, the same job. You know, you might cut it out with one and then you might pocket with another one. Uh, <coughs> What happens to the material where the, the curve is? It just evaporates. It's smoke. It just floats for you. It's gone. It's gone. It's like guys in your mind. Your shot is too crowded. Well, yeah. Is it bad? Well, it's like it's like it's like it's like I'll tell, I'll tell you a little story. It turn, well, the wood turns into smoke and, and uh, uh, I guess creosote kind of material. When I first got my laser, uh, I, you know, I was, I was pretty happy, and my laser is a pretty big laser. It, it, uh, the cutting area is three feet by four feet, and the thing, the shipping weight on it was like twelve hundred pounds. It's pretty. I, it's not a picture of Paul when I got it. It's almost as big as my kid's BMW. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, so anyway, it, it's got a six-inch exhaust. So you, you need an exhaust. So I hook up this exhaust and. I uh, got a big hose from Peachtree here. And I ran it out the garage door, and I'm, man, I'm going to cut some wood. And I started cutting some, some uh, plywood or whatever it was. And this is, I don't know, five, six o'clock at night. <laughs> My wife comes out. She says, "There's a fire truck out front." <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> I said, "What?" She says, "Yeah, there's a fire truck pulled up in front of the house. He doesn't have his lights on though." He's seen smoke, okay. come, he's seen smoke <laughs> come out of the garage. One of the neighbors must have called the fire department. There's smoke coming from someplace. I mean, I pulled my hose in, I closed my doors, you know. And I live, uh, there's a cul-de-sac that comes around. Like i got a separate garage that I do this in. It's not attached to the house. And from the cul-de-sac, it's a clear view of my garage. And I, I close it up, I walk out, and now the fire truck, he's pulled around the cul-de-sac. And they're looking around, you know, and I just... When it ate supper. <laughs> so that's what happens with the stuff that the laser <laughs> puts out. Uh, seriously though, when you cut plastic, it creates a lot of fumes. And not only smells, but they're dangerous. You don't want to breathe it. You've got to have an exhaust system. Uh, they're also flammable. With a laser and you're cutting plastic, and wood even, but plastic especially, if you don't use an exhaust system, and you also use what they call an air assist, which is just you hook your air compressor to it, it's got a hose and it blown right through on your workpiece as you're cutting. If you don't do that, those gases gather, you got a flash fire. You're out of business and your garage or house is probably going to be out of business too. 
It's a dangerous thing. So you, you've got to be prepared for that. You've also got to pay attention to what material you're going to engrave with a laser because some things will outgas things that are really noxious and yeah. toxic and yeah. just don't want to be cutting that. And there are some things that can produce fumes that will actually eat the parts inside the laser. So you've got to be really careful right. about that. What Paul is basically talking about is polyvinyl chloride, PVC. You know, releases a chlorine gas. Why did y'all choose lasers? What's that? Why did you choose a laser for you? Work well, I, uh, that, that's another good question, and uh, I bought, and it applies to both of these machines. Uh, I bought the the CNC for a specific <laughs> job, and uh, we were making birdhouses at the time, and we were making lots of birdhouses, and we we're cutting them and drilling them all on by hand using fixtures and things. So. I had been looking at lasers for uh, quite a while. Uh, not lasers, but CNC, because laser wasn't around. The laser was completely out of touch. I, I couldn't even begin to think about it. So we're looking at CNC. So I, I bought a shop bot. I'm a shop bot guy, and uh, I've got brochures here for shop bots. I'm, I don't make anything from them, but they make a good machine. They've been around all the time. So, anyways, when I first ran into shop bot, it was at the IWF show and I don't remember what year it was, and they were out in the hallway, and I had read about them. You know, they, they got this CNC router for your home shop. And I saw it, and the rollers were garage door rollers. It had cables, like much like an old drafting machine. You know, the, the drafting machine where you move it, and it keeps everything square, and that's how they kept their carriage square, was this, this series of cables, you know, that moved on an X, you know, as you moved around. Uh, well, I think I'm going to wait. And a few years later, I was at IWF again, and now they got a machine. So now I decided this is what we're going to do. And I ordered a machine with a, a table of uh, 5 feet by 10 feet, because what I wanted to cut was Baltic birch. And actually, uh, uh, not Baltic birch, but Finland birch. Finland birch we were using at the time because Finland birch is a, a weather resistant product. It's almost, as, it, it actually surpasses marine plywood in, in some tests. It has a you know, waterproof uh, glue. And it's really, really good stuff. So I wanted to be able to be cutting one sheet and loading another sheet at the same time. Well, I, I get my machine, and at that time, uh, they were, a lot of it was do it yourself. You could buy the machine in different stages. <laughs> So that's what I did, and that's how I learned a lot about about this. Is uh, you get the parts, but then you had to put it together. In my case, I made the table for it. I saved twelve hundred bucks by going to the steel place in Snellville and buying steel. And with that twelve hundred bucks, I bought a plasma cutter. <laughs> so now I made my table. I got my plasma cutter that I wanted, and used it a little bit to, for my table. That's my excuse. I'm a tool junkie. You know, I've got the tools, tools, tools. Uh, so anyway, I get this thing all built, and I do my first whatever I was doing, and boy, I, I was sure let down. I thought, man, this is this is a my dream thing. This is going to make all this stuff, and I get it all drawn. I I hit start, and it was like, now what? This thing's moving around. All the euphoria was gone because now it's like, now what do I do? I like making things. And now I'm sitting there watching this thing cut, you know? So it was, a, it was a big shock. But back to why we bought the thing. I bought it to make birdhouse parts, never made a one. Okay? I bought the laser for the specific two things in mind. One was to do marketry, but on a, for doing conference tables, for big time marketry. And the other one was to engrave black granite. Uh, the lasers now are, are really big in the, the funeral business. Uh, in lots of part, several parts of the country, black granite headstones with your uh, picture or whatever you want laser engraved in it is a big deal now. Uh, so I, by the time I got my laser, the money had dried up on that project. <laughs> so I've never used my laser for doing black granite or marketry. But it, but it, it, it 
there's one thing about it is you buy these machines with a purpose and then you never know what's going to happen. And something always new happens. And I've been busy with these machines now, this laser especially this year, you know, almost every day. You know, and it's stuff I never thought I'd be doing. In the same way with the router. I bought, and there's another lesson here. You guys, you, if you're looking to buy these machines, and like today, up the street, up the street here at 11 o'clock, Rockler's got a demo of their little tiny machine. You know, I, I don't know much about it, but I know it's small. And if you're going to buy any of these machines, buy the biggest you can, because you just don't know what's going to happen. You know, if you, you buy it, you think, oh, I'm going to make these plaques. You may never, you may never sell a plaque, but something's going to come along that you never even thought about. Somebody's going to say, hey, can you do this? Well, yeah, I can do that. And then next thing you know, then you might have a business going. I have a, basically just a handful of customers. And I've, I've had those customers for years. Uh, I don't go out looking for work. I don't take work on an individual basis. You know, can you engrave this for me? Or, you know, somebody had one this week about a baseball bat. I don't know, where did that one come from? I forget. <laughs> Get an email about it, engraving a baseball bat. What's that? That's where it came because I sent it to you. <laughs> Paul does this. Paul has a different kind of thing. This is Paul's hobby, but I do this stuff. This is how I make my money. What little money I make, you know. So, but anyways, you, 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 these things you, you buy the biggest you can. It opens you up to things you you never never dreamed of. Does the CNC machine do the same thing that you do in that laser? Uh, in some cases, yeah. Like that plastic thing, I've, I used to cut those out with the CNC, but the laser is much faster. Do you, do you have to make an adjustment for that? Uh, is that acrylic or plastic or what? That's acrylic. Okay. That's cast acrylic. How, how do you keep the laser from burning it if the trait is to burn it in, like with wood over there? That's what takes time to learn. Magic. And like I said, you know, this is all things I've, I've just learned by reading and doing. And it, if I can do it, anybody can do it. There's, right now, there's so much more information out there than there used to be, uh, especially with a laser. Uh, you, if, if you're going to do one, if you're going to... Go ahead, Jim. Is the power adjustable on the laser? Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's a whole... Both. That's a whole session right in itself. Uh, but if you're going to buy one of these machines, like today, if you go look at that machine and they've got it on sale and you get wowed by the salesman and like, oh, it'll do this, it'll do that, resist the temptation to buy it. Get on the internet and look at all these forums. All of these machines will have a forum. And there's other ones, like Sawmill Creek is a really good one for all woodworking CNC. They have a, an engraver's forum which the laser guys are on. They got a CNC section of it with the, the CNC where the router guys are on. They got metal working now and something else, signs. But if you read these things and like Sawmill Creek goes back years. It goes back and there before Sawmill Creek there was Badger Pond and those Badger Pond archives are, are out there too. They're on another <laughs> website. So you got years and years, you know, with uh, Sawmill Creek Badger Pond, it's like 13, 14 years or something, M maybe longer. So if you read, if you do a search and you read those archives, uh, you're going to see uh, there's going to be a lot of information. Uh, one of the things, though, with this information on the uh, on the internet is uh, it's like the the girl in the State Farm commercial, the blonde. You guys know what, what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> yeah. What's well, on the internet? You can't put anything on the internet. It isn't true. You know, like, here's my boyfriend, bonjour. You know, like, <laughs> it's a great commercial, you know. Uh, but and what Bob was saying here earlier today, he said, "Well, I got a shill out in the in the in the audience." Well, let me tell you, there's a whole lot of shills for the woodworking, not just not these machines, but all kinds of woodworking machinery. And they're uh, they're doing. They got. I know we got a podcaster here. But there's a lot of podcasters out there that are, they get their free tools. 
and it's the same way with these CNC. You got these guys that do these reviews. You know, uh, well, Rockler sent me this to review it. Well, they sent it to him. He's not going to say anything bad about it. And, you know, you're anonymous on the internet. So it could be a guy, a salesman. You're reading his post on what a great machine this is. You know, and it says, I'm Betty Lou from, you know, Vancouver. But it's actually Bill from the, the laser company that's, that's writing it. So you have to read a lot. And when you do that, uh, patterns are going to come through. You're going to see things, you know, just don't go by one post or this post. This guy says it's bad, this guy says it's good. If you keep reading, there's gonna, a pattern is going to develop. And it's going to give you an idea what's a good machine, what's not a good machine. Like right now, I, we're, we talk, I started talking about the, the small CNC, but now the, the big thing in the laser is a small laser, 40 watt lasers. And they're on eBay. And it's like, wow, I can get a laser for that money? You know, there's, they vary. And they're really cheap. Well, they are really cheap. And that's the problem. And you'll read, all, you know, it's, it's just like these small little CNC's. Well, I got a CNC, but it's, it's really, it, it ends up being too small. Uh, the, the thing with these lasers now is, if you look on eBay, a lot of these things are sold from Taiwan, or not Taiwan, but Hong Kong. You know, we deliver it, you know, you get the next day. You know, just give us your money. Uh, when I bought my laser, I imported it directly from China. And that's the only way I could afford it. I couldn't afford a nice epilogue like Paul's got. Paul, he's got a great machine. And, a, and it's a good company and they make great stuff. But after all those years looking, I, there's no way I could ever afford one of those machines. So I took the chance and uh, ended up with a good machine from, from China. Uh, but talking to these people in China, and asking them about, you know, what about these machines? Because the, uh, one of their, uh, this company makes a small machine like that. And, uh, I, and one day I asked them about, you know, they're, oh, they're on eBay and they're in Hong Kong. Here's the guy in China, he's telling me, don't buy it from Hong Kong because they're counterfeit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah. you know? Chinese so, guy saying they're counterfeit. Yeah, yeah. They, they're counterfeiting our machines. <laughs> And if you read about these small, they call them hobby lasers, 40 watt hobby lasers, stay away from them. Uh, because they're just not that good. Maybe, maybe somebody's got a good one, but generally they're not good. Hey Ralph, you're talking about... But, you know, Nicky's got a question. I was doing a kick block, mm -hmm. and he came in a piece of tape and a sheet of bottle. Now, we're, I passed around that half inch piece, that letter, and with my laser, 80 watt, that's what it looks like. Paul's probably, you probably have the same, that's so Baltic Birch. I don't think I can cut something that thick on mine. But you're, you, the, that kit was probably cut on maybe a 400 watt machine. Right. And it's going to cut it, but it's not going to burn it, because it's got so much faster. But you're still going to have that curve. It's dark, but I don't think it's really bad. But yeah. But it never ran good. Yeah, you just can't. You just can't do it. You know. This is something not, not to go afield, but when you look at those dovetail things that they didn't fit, right? What it brought to mind to me was <clears throat> when you make some, you got to make it about five times, make it work right. And that is true. you done that and said, you know, the curve is off a little bit and adjusted it just a hair, it would it would sooner or later fit, but it may take a, you know, a bunch of tries. And that's for that day. The next day, when the weather has changed, really? it's going to change again. Okay. What's that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, and so that's so now you're back to, you know, next week it's the same file and gee, it's not cutting. What's going on? But but when you do a regular dovetail, you have the same problem. You use mechanical saw, which not. But there's there's more involved. You've got heat involved. You're burning it, and, it, and, it, and there's. Uh, I don't know about my, my laser. What's that? It'll burn differently on different days. Taking the moisture out of it. My laser is temperature sensitive. 
Okay, mine is water cooled. It uses a big, huge glass tube. It's like the, the latest 70s technology. You know? <laughs> but it works. You know? It's still doing that, that job it's got to do. Paul's has an RF tube. But Paul's tube is probably more expensive. Yeah, I've got these big fancy machines. Did you have software, some software and stuff before? See if you could work with the software before? This is, what, this is one of the things that's interesting about all these things. And I, I can bring up some of the software. Uh, they basically use the same software. Like, uh, I'll show you. I had all this stuff ready to go. And thank you, machine here. Uh, Microsoft. Yeah. I mean, you go spend thousands of dollars. Can you do something with it once you get it? Yeah. Well, Software is a big deal. It's a long learning experience, a learning process to try to figure out how to drive the software to use whatever you're doing. Yeah. You, 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 you have to learn how to do it. Uh, but they, this all basically started, there's a couple with, uh, with Hewlett Packard, uh, what's HPGL? It's uh, Hewlett Packard Graphic Language, what, what is that? Graphics Language, yeah. That's, that's what I thought. And it started with plotters and moving to a certain point. And the CNC stuff, it's kind of the same thing, except that now you, you've got, let's, you got your wood, and you, you've got your X and your Y, and you, you, it's going to tell you to go to that coordinate, you know, one inch, one inch, and it, it moves there. But now with the router, you look at it from a side view, now you've got a Z, Z axis. And so it's basically every thousands inside, if, if you take Take this, and there's a point everywhere inside this whole thing that tells there's a you know uh, uh, tells the machine you know the tip of that tool is supposed to be at that point inside, but it all started with that uh, that Hewlett Packard uh, uh, language, and now uh, what we're doing with the the woodworking stuff a lot of it is based on what they call G code. Bruce talked a little bit about it last week. And G code was meant for the uh, uh, the metal working, the milling, that type of thing, and it's been around for a lot longer. That started out actually as uh, numerical control. We're now computer numerical numerical control, but the uh, metal working industry had numerical control, and they used uh, a tape, much like a uh, a teletype tape. If you ever used a teletype, you would type it in, you know, it would spit out a tape with holes in it. And then you fed that tape into the machine and would turn it into, yeah. you know, letter. Well, the machine tools did the same thing. And they had these big rolls, and they'd, they'd sit on top of the machine, and that tape would run, and it'd read the, read the holes. Kind of, I guess it's kind of like punch cards, you know, kind of the same thing. Punch cards. You, you uh, got a teletype and punch the tape for you, and then you'd have to read the tape in. There you go. You it's my engineers. Yeah. The engineers know all this stuff. But that G code has been around for a long time. It's been around for a long time. And the G code, there are a lot of variations on it. And when, if you're going to buy one of these machines, the shop bot, they took G code and they made it in, they've got their own version of it. And it's very simple to use. But a lot of these other machines, they use a generic G code. And they're using, probably, Tommy, what are you using? Mach 3? I'm not using anything. Not yet. Well, originally, I mean, eventually, I'll be using. And you're using Mach 3. Mach 3. And, and that, that's just the name of a, uh, 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 a CAM program. Uh, but it's meant for a lot of different machines. And that G code, you know, for the different controllers, like there's uh, uh, GE makes controllers, Fanuc makes a controller, uh, Siemens makes controllers, and they're all a little bit different. But we're just word worker guys in our shops. You know, we don't want all that stuff. That's just, it confuses it. That's why I like the shop bot. It's very easy, their, their code is very easy to use. Are you 
is what you have to realize, Ralph. G code's pretty generic. You can uh, program a CNC metal cutting machine to machine an entire engine block right. from right. a forging. Right. So you're not only drilling and cutting stuff, but you're also turning this. And, that, and that's why it's a lot more complicated yeah. than we need. You know, I'm a simple guy. You know, <laughs> Lewis. Ralph, what was your uh, time frame of being able to actually use it after you got it? Uh, pretty much immediately. But I'll, pretty much uh, I'll say that, but every day I'm learning new things. Sure. And I've, I've had this shop bought now for over 10 years. I really don't remember what I bought it for. And I literally, every day, I'll, you know, I've got to keep feeding my brain. You know, I read these forums, you know, sometimes I'll watch YouTube, <laughs> you know, but it's because it, you just have to, you're always learning something, you know, this is, so it's, it's an ongoing process. So you weren't a year before you could do a project? Right? No, but I had prepared. I had prepared. I had did, tried to do my homework right. before I bought. But even so, then it changed. Uh, <coughs> when I bought my shop, I, it came with a... Here's something else, too. We done with all this, I guess? Oh, by the way, too, I put up, that's my website. And on my website, I've got some galleries. You kind of see some of the stuff is done with CNC. There's signs, things like that. There's signs that if I had to bought the big machine, I couldn't have done them. You know, like 10 foot long subdivision signs, things like that. Uh, anyways. First thing you need to learn is how to draw. You need a CAD program or Corel Draw. With the woodworking things, Corel Draw is pretty much the standard that people use. And this is one of the things that actually drew me to the club. I used to buy at Kentech. And I go in there on Saturday mornings, there's this group of guys sitting there, you know, in the back. And well, what are they doing? Well, that's the woodworking club. So I said, you know, I'd, I'd watch every once in a while. And, and then I joined after I found out that they had a Corel Draw SIG. We don't have that anymore. Because I thought, why these guys, they're pretty progressive. They already know about this stuff. And that's, that's when I joined. So anyways, you need a CAD, a CAM, a CAD, I said CAD, that's what I want, a CAD program. You need a drawing program to draw your shapes. And then you take it to a, a CAD program. I mean a CAM program, computer aided machining program. And in that program, you're going to take that drawing you just did. We, we can do it here. Um, if I get it going, I had it all set up to do this. Some of these programs now are CAD, CAM. So, anyways, you're going to do your drawing in your CAD program or Corel Draw, whatever. Uh, you move it to your CAM program, and you're going to sign your tool paths. You're going to tell it, okay, I want to cut out this shape. And you're going to tell it what size router bit you want to use. You're going to tell it, do, you want, do I want to put the tool path on the outside, on the inside, or right on the line? And what depth do I want to make that tool go down to? How fast do I want that machine to to cut that out. The, in, in the case if you have, uh, I use a router, but there's this thing called a spindle. All your big machinery, they use spindles. And it's basically a, a really high priced router. But it's bigger bearings, very quiet. So you, you can tell uh, the CAM program what speed you want that spindle to run. You can change the speeds inside the, 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 the file that you're writing. So then that, you get all that information, and then that outputs to a, uh, a post-processor. And the post is basically the G-code. You, you do the drawing, you send it to the CAM program, tell it what to do, it interprets that, and sends that to the post-processor. Post-processor writes the code that your particular machine is going to use. Now a lot of these programs, uh, the one I use all the time, it does it all. You know, it's, it's a CAD-CAM program. Uh, 
And I've lost the question and I already put Lewis to sleep. <laughs> uh, I got off on a tangent there. Well, Ralph, essentially what you're talking about is you're using a GUI graphical user interface and all yes. that stuff's hidden in it. Okay, and so once you've done it and you get your visual and you turn it and say, this is what I want, you say, do it, and then the machine does it. Right. So that stuff, what you're showing is kind of in the back that nobody ever sees. Oh, but you do see it. Yeah, and I'll, I'll show, you, show you why. Uh, what program is that? Uh, this is a program, uh, that's what I was going to say. When I first got shop out, it came with a program called Vector. And it was a German program, and it was a Windows-based program. And it's still around, but it was meant for the machine tool people. But at that time when I bought the ShopBot, there was really nothing else around, and that's what they used. Now they, uh, they, they then they went to uh, uh, Dellcam, who makes the ArtCam program, 3D program. You know, there's seven, eight thousand dollars for this program. Oh. Obviously, you're not going to buy a, you know, a program that costs more, you know, twice as much as your machine or as much as your okay. machine. And then that, that's only to buy the thing, buy the, buy the program. You don't buy the program, you license you to use the program. You never buy any of these things. You're licensed to use them. Yeah. And uh, on a program like that, you're going to pay a yearly maintenance fee. You know, some of them are up like $2,000 a year as a maintenance fee. So you, once you start using those, you know, that, that's out of our area. You make a lot of bird houses. <laughs> you make a lot of bird houses. Or you got to make a lot of cabinets. Or you got to do, do, say, ArtCam will do this. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw something the other day. The new Samsung phone has a, a waffle thing. And it was made, it was designed in ArtCam. We can use ArtCam. If you want to buy it, you can use the same thing that these giant companies are using. But you don't, you don't need it. Uh, back to the, to the uh, the drawing. I wanted to with the differences in the files. You're going to do a drawing, and in this case, it's a photograph. This is my cat. Okay. This was done on the carve right. This was done on the laser from the same cell phone picture that hasn't been doctored. All, we, all I did was, was crop it just to get the cat's head. And I just fooling around, and that's the first, it's, it's a, I'll pass this around, it's, it's not three dimensional, it's two and a half D, it sticks up. They tell you three dimensional, well, they're not really three dimensional, because you can't turn it, you know, it's just there, you know. But anyways, you can take that same file or that same picture and use it on different machines. And this is just an example of the different output you get with the different machine, laser and carver. And the carver is similar to what you can do with uh, a CNC router. It's just a miniature version of it. There you go. There. How much time are you talking about for like the laser to make that size nice picture? Uh, that one was probably maybe 12 minutes or something, and I don't know if Bruce told me how long that took. Uh, well basically, what you, you have a choice. You can do draft, and that's probably draft, but you can do fine. And draft would take maybe 12 minutes, and fine may take an hour. Mm -hmm. And it makes a whole lot more passes. And that's the same way with the laser. You can tell the laser how many passes, like in that, that's what they call a raster. And that's the, 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 the tool is just is moving back and forth. It's not going to a certain point. It's just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and, and varying the power. Like the dot matrix printers did? Bingo. Or like a printer would do. Just any, any, like an inkjet printer. Would do. Okay? Uh, so you can move these passes closer together or farther apart. But now you're talking wood, and wood is not going to hold because it's wood is wood, and it it's not tight. The wood, you know, the resolution. It's what I, what I call it. You just can't hold the resolution in wood. You can hold resolution much better in a, a man-made, like a plastic or MDF, something like that. Uh, but for instance, in fine, you won't have the tear out that you'll have in draft. 
Well, that, see, that's something else now, too. You can, you can do, uh, I don't know if you can, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure you can with a carve right. You can do a roughing pass. No? You can do, you can do, you can do a, a roughing pass like in Profile Lab. Uh, and you might want to change the tool. You know, and you'll, you'll hog out an area and do it roughly. And then you can go back with another tool and do, do it fine. But it takes more time. And personally, I don't know where you'd sell that kind of stuff. How do you make your money? I, all these years, I've never had anybody ask me for anything like I'm passing around. Yeah. You know? But when you go to these shows, wow, oh, it'll do that. I can do my, all my grandkids and da da da. But nobody's going to pay you to do that stuff. Can I take, it to the, take you to the other end of the spectrum? Go ahead. That's with a shop bot. I do cabinet work. But I right. find myself doing, for a typical kitchen, you might do 20 cabinet ends the same. Uh, would it be strong enough to cut out a sheet of plywood? Depending on the machine. Uh, That's what in, I was kind of, I think in, you'd have to have We're running plan. really, uh, I'm almost I'm out of my time now. But in the PowerPoint, uh, I had some files, some pictures. I don't know if you, anybody knows uh, David Buxton. <coughs> He's uh, with, the, uh, the, with the Guild. I'm sure you guys know. You know David? And David had a, I, I, in the PowerPoint, I got a picture of, he had a cabinet shop in Avondale Estates. And he had a partner there. I don't know what their arrangement was. But one of them retired, David's younger guy. David moved everything home. And he's got a, a shop at his home. <coughs> and he does cabinets at home. He's got a full-size shop on And he uses one of the uh, programs, that very expensive program, this cabinet vision or something yeah, like that. Cabinet vision. And this is exactly what he does. And this is what these machines excel at. The routers, this is what they excel at. Flat goods. Same thing over and over and over again. Or, in the case of cabinets, it's a variation on theme. It's all still flat. They're just different sizes. And that's, that's where these machines really excel. Well, it's a repeatability. So. Right. When you go to the IWA meeting, you know, and they put in the boards and out comes the doors already finished on right. the other end, they're that's, cutting that from the labor, right? No, that's no. generally a, a, a CNC. CNC. That's, that's a router. Yeah. CNC. Right. You know, these other, mine, I put one tool in it, I got to stop it, re zero it, you know, when I put in a new tool. Uh, they have what they call automatic tool changers. And I don't know if David has an automatic tool changer or not, but you do this, you do this, the file, and you tell the different, you know, want to use a tool, I'm going to do a roughing pass with this tool, I'm going to do a fine pass with this tool. Or like in, the, in cabinet doors, you know, they might do a, a fake faux uh, panel, yeah. frame and panel door. And they're going to go in with a, with a plunge cutter, and they're going to do that, the molding, you know. And then they're going to go to a V bit, and then make the sharp corners on the outside corners, because the router, it's not going to make. You got a radius. It's not going to make a sharp corner on the outside. It can on the inside. So it'll, it'll, the machines with the automatic tool changer, it'll automatically, it'll get to the point. It'll tell it go over here, pick up this tool, re-zero that tool, and then come back and. And do the next thing. Yeah, we don't very do that. Expensive. When we went, yeah. when we went to that van, when we went to that company, Pierce, Pierce. the, the molding company, Pierce, 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 Pierce. Remember, they had that big one in the back. Yeah. And did they have like? It seemed like to me. I remembered it. it looked like a round cylinder. And it had all the different bits on it, and that thing just it, it just rotated yeah. down when it wanted a different bit. Carl. Some of these programs also <clears throat> will not run on, off a regular computer. The program that we use, we had to specifically build a laptop that cost over five thousand. And what is that for? For in the uh, automotive industry. Okay. Uh, it does forty-one, forty steel, about four inches thick. But it was um. That's plasma, but four inches thick. Well, some of us wired them, but. And I, they, they, oh, that's a, that's a, you know, we're talking our home home show, home workshops here now. But the same technology, Tommy's building a plasma cutter. In that movement, those motors, that's all the same stuff. Pretty much the same, yeah. Now Tommy's got, you know, he's got to have a you know, controller to control that plasma torch. 
I don't you know, know if you remember, Ralph, we actually sold one of those machines down at Advanced Wood Products on Georgia Tech's campus. Yes, and, yeah, and that was a big one. out a complete set of uh, cabinet doors and sides. And where's our sign? We was done on that. Our sign is done on that. Yeah, I think it's hanging up outside. Yeah. But, you know, we're not talking about that today. We're talking about but, I mean, our garages. But, a million-dollar machine, maybe. Well, it's not a million, but they're, they start at about a hundred grand, hundred fifty thousand. You all, yeah. you know, half a million dollars. It might as well be a million. <laughs> What's that? It, for hobbies, it might as well be a million if it's a hundred right. grand. Uh, <laughs> and thinking, of, thinking of that, too, uh, and I couldn't find them. So, you know, I've got, I, could, I should start my PowerPoint here just for the heck of it. Uh, there's a company, you'll see they have, uh, they have these samples, and they're done with a laser, and they're, they're two and a half D, and the detail is tremendous. What, you, what they're doing, even with a laser, they're doing a roughing, and then they're doing a final pass. And that final pass burns away all that charred area and stuff. And they're, they're, I mean, it, it, I wish I could, I had them last time, but I don't know where they are. Uh, I don't even know what's worth do, doing this. What else you guys want to know about before I even? <laughs> Ralph, how far is the Z travel on your shop box? Twelve inches. Twelve. And that, that's a big thing. If you're going to buy a machine, uh, some of these machines, you know, like a three-inch Z. What's it good for? Uh, three quarters of an inch, and you've got hold downs. You got to figure out how you're going to hold that down. Sometimes you're going to raise that up. You're going to use vacuum to hold it down. Um, so now, if you do like a three dimension, you have to rotate it. Put on a two and rotate it around through the other. Well, the three dimensional is a whole different thing. Shopbot actually makes they call a five axis machine, and the router will go like this. But I think it's forty thousand dollars. We're probably not going to buy one. It's meant for prototyping. Uh, a lot of them should pass these around. Uh, What's that? I got forty thousand in my whole shop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does the shop lot start at today? Uh, here's a price list here. Five thousand dollars. Is that the table top model? Yeah. Five thousand. They call for forty thousand for that five axis. But uh, th this is something else too. Do uh, you all know Ron Brown? Yeah. Ron bought a shop box, and Ron bought a used one, and it was like brand new. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna buy one of these machines, try to find something used. A lot of times you'll see them advertised, but a lot of times you won't. You put out a feeler, you'll want to buy on some of these classifiers like Sawmill Creek. You're gonna get calls because there's a lot of guys that fell for all this pie in the sky stuff. They bought these machines. The guy Ron Brown bought his from was that kind of guy. And he bought everything. And he even upgraded. They did all, he, all kinds of stuff. And I don't know what Ron Brown bought it for, but I know he drove all the way to New York <laughs> and drove it back. I, he told me, I can't remember, but he got a heck of a deal. He, he probably got half price for a brand new machine. For a guy that got sold a bill of goods he didn't understand what he was doing. He didn't do his homework first. Yeah. I, I know you feel like you're pressed for time. Would you rather make this into a two-part demo and do it another time, or do you want to keep going? Uh, that's up to these guys. We still got that YouTube right. video. You yeah, that's around. only a three-minute video. That's, no, okay. that's something, one of the new things. Yeah. Uh, but again, I, what I want to get to, somebody asked me, they ask about Z height. Okay. A lot of it's got to do with not just the piece you're cutting, but the hold down you're going to use, okay? You might have to use vacuum. In that case, well, when I did these, these were done on my router. On my big router with a quarter cable 7518 with a 132nd fit on a big 5x10. You can look at them, they're pretty delicate. But I did that with a vacuum hold down. I made a, a plenum. And now I, I, I made it so I can put different tops on it for doing specific jobs using uh, a, a foam gasket. And it's amazing what you can do. So these were just, you wouldn't believe it. They're, they're done on a huge row. 
so you can do very delicate work with it. But the point is, is that plenum, now that takes up so much room. So if you've got a short Z, what are you going to do? It goes back to what I said at the beginning. You want to buy the biggest you can afford because you never know what's going to come in the door. Go ahead. Show them, the, show them that hinge thing that I, that I looked at when I brought it up. Because like I said, that shows, that shows your X thing because it's very positive because you've got the heart sweet spot and then where it comes out, it's less. You know, it's right, 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 right. This is you know, uh, something that uh, somebody came up with. It's actually, people have copied it. The, I think the guy that originally came up with it is in Germany. He's got a website for $12 a year. He's got a little generator, uh, part generator that will, you, you put in, you plug in the, the thickness or the size, whatever you want to do, and it comes back with a file for your, for your laser, and that's plywood. Dang. Yeah, but what I'm saying, it's, so, it, you know, it would be very difficult to cut on a scroll saw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very time what Hans is talking about on one side. It can be done. What Hans is talking about no time. On one side, you can see. Uh, yeah, but it you can see the curve. The drill bit. The the the, the, the grooves are are wider on one side than they are on the other side. So that's what he. Yeah. But you'd have to do is is drill a hole and just and drill a lot of holes. <laughs> Uh, here's some, we're passing around those letters. Those were done on the uh, uh, the router. These were done on the laser. Give you an idea of the difference. On the laser, I don't need a vacuum fixture. I just lay them on my table and I cut. Well, there's a difference between the laser and the router. Well, here again, you don't have any cutting forces against the material. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's a whole whole other ballpark with the, with the routers. You're gonna have people gonna sell your router and say, oh, it's this fast. It'll, it'll faster. Da, 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 da. Okay, well that's real all well and good, but the faster it is, you just can't set this piece on there. You can't put it down with with double stick tape or something because now it's trying to, that router is trying to move that thing around. So you know you complicate everything. It's you really got to, again do your homework. I mean. You've got to go into the stuff knowing what you what you're buying, what you want to do. Right. We were talking about different machines. A neighbor of mine bought one, kind of a kit form thing off the internet. Mm -hmm. It was made out of MDF. It used aluminum angle for the tracks with B rollers. The B rollers chewed up the angle track. Right. And I think he paid about twenty five hundred dollars out of right. this thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll make. Carry on with that. There's two things. It's like, just like I told you to begin with. When I first went my first shop bought, they were using garage door rollers. It's come a long way, but that stuff's still around. What Tommy says, it's basically it's junk. They'll also tell you that you can just write your own G code. And uh, <laughs> Bob had a guy. Bob had a guy. Well, okay. I've done it. <laughs> uh, the South for Sight things that Bob used to have in his, in his basement. And a guy one time. Uh, brought in a small machine that he was marketing. That's what, yep. supposedly, right? Quarter twenty screw threads for the drive yeah. system. Yeah, that, that's another thing, you know? The drive system, you want ball and screw, you want rack and pinion, you want belts and motor, you know, there's all kinds of stuff there. But anyway, he had this machine, and it was, I forget what he brought in the motors and all the pieces, and it was gonna be a kit, I guess, right? And he said, well, you can you can use uh, it's a Mach 3, it was one of the, some program he had, and this program was free up to 100 lines of code. Okay? And he proceeded to talk about, you know, okay, now we're going to make the router, and he, he did some, he did an example. He says, we're going to make it go from here to here. Okay? At least. This one I did to show Mickey. And Mickey's leaving. I'll pass this around. I did. There's different you know, there's different strategies you can take. Like Don says, you you, want, you do a job, you get, you're going to do it different ways. I first I drew it up real quick, and drawing is really quick. You, and this is just done in Corel. Uh, you just draw your shape, then you hit array, tell how many, how big you want it, boom, done just like that. Once you learn the program, 
You're not going to start out doing it. So I just did a little quick thing. I wanted to show Mickey, well, you know, this, these will do chip carving too. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> what? Even though it looks like a chip carve thing, it's not what he can do. Because his brain's working all the time. And it's working this hand. Okay? This chip carving is a 60 degree cut. And that's all it's going to be. So the wider that piece is, the deeper that cut's going to be. Mickey doesn't have to do that. Mickey can make that depth consistent by changing his hand. And, you know, telling his hand what to do. So, but anyways, this is just, just very small, right? Pass it around, you see. I'm going to show you the code. And that took what, maybe two minutes? And actually, yeah, I cut that twice. I, I did two passes on that, okay. trying to eliminate tear out. You'll see tear out in there. Uh, and again, you use these, these shows and this guy that's selling these things that, that probably doesn't have a machine himself. Oh, that, that, that's perfect. Look at that. Well, what's this tear? Oh, that's nothing. You know, because he doesn't know. You guys know. That's the things you guys know. It's tear up. And it's, it's, in, that, it's in that cup. Anyways, uh, let's go here now. Will the draft cut take care of that? Will what? Will that draft cut take care of that uh, he did tear out? Uh, the tear out is going to be taken care of by different routines that you, you're going to, depending on what you're cutting, with the bit you're using, you're going to have to try a couple of things. Do I want one pass? Do I want two passes? Do I want three passes? And you're going to have to experiment a little bit to get you know, productivity. You, want, you don't want to take forever to do that. But you want it to look the best you can. So there's there's like a uh, a point there where you say this is okay. I saw a guy the other night oh, I, on YouTube, uh, uh, Todd Todd Clippinger, American something workshop. He's got some pretty good. He's a podcaster guy, and he says in my shop he says uh, I don't strive for perfection. I strive for excellence. And there's a difference, and I th I think that that's a good thing. Well, what you're going to do. If you try, you're never going to be perfect, but you can always be excellent if you try. So, what's that? Good enough. Good enough. Anyways, that little thing we're passing around, this is the code for that, and it's 1,644 lines long. Oh, you got the first 100 free now. Okay? And this is what the code looks like. These are all the different moves. And if you know what you're looking at, you, you know.
Hell no. I'm the, I wouldn't even let Bob write it. Because Bob, Bob wouldn't write it for me. You know, and when I need a, when I need questions on code, that's my guy right there. Because <laughs> he, he knows. But I sure don't know, but I could do this. You, 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 you guys could do this too. What's that? You don't sit there and generate those numbers that do you? No, but that's that's the point I'm making. Some of these small machines like Tommy's talking about, they tell you low cost machine, da 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 and you can write your own code. Good luck. <laughs> but the good thing is, is now um, there, there are cheaper programs. The program that I use, I forget what I've got in it. I've been, it's been upgraded, but it's three, four thousand dollars. Now you can buy a, what they call a 3D program for two thousand dollars. You can buy a two and a half D program for about six hundred, and does a lot of the same stuff that the program I will do. My mine does. But mine, I can also use it for other machines. I use it for my, my laser. I use it for my vinyl cutter. So there's different uh, different advantages there. Ralph, you said two and a half D? Yeah. That's what they call this. That uh, cat, it's right over here. Because it's, all, it's just raised. It's not raised. It's, you're cutting away and leaving a raised portion. That's a whole new ball game that Paul is into now is... The, the maker bot thing where you actually make parts. You know, here we're taking wood and we're taking things away to find out what's in it, inside it. Where the maker bot, they're adding it. And you're making the piece from, from nothing. So that's a whole different ball games. But that's small shop stuff now too. And they now have 3D printers. That that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, the maker bot. plastic and you build it up right. from the bottom yeah. up. Paul is really getting into that. <laughs> I expect to see Paul with one pretty soon. But ShopBot actually is, is they they were supposed to be out by the end of the year with it, using their their like their uh, their movements and putting one of these MakerBot heads on it to make stuff, to extrude stuff. Uh, what was the other thing I was gonna say there? That's a lot. That was awesome. Well, I'm I I, I still want to show you a, a one other thing. We're going to show you a video of the, the newest thing. Uh, Diane was kind enough to bring this in. This was done on a laser. And you'll find that the, the lines, everything fits really great. But this is not the norm. Uh, and that's why I asked her to bring it in. This took, you know, John Rudder did this. And he spent a long time just perfecting this. And it, it takes a long time. Uh, I just saw in the, this month's uh, Wood Magazine where Woodcraft is selling uh, laser cut marquetry things for tabletops, whatever. And I haven't seen it only in the picture of Wood Magazine. But it's nothing like this. If you look at the picture, you can see the gap around all the, the cuts because that's easy to do. This isn't. So they tell you you can do marquetry. Yeah, you can do it. But is it excellent or is it okay? <laughs> or maybe it's not even okay. This is excellent. So, uh, so with that, I want Bob to run this video because this is kind of the, the newest thing. And I actually have one here. He doesn't have to worry about the, the depth on that one because that was only one fortieth of an inch thick. Right, so but it's still hard to do. Yeah. That's the point. It's still hard to do. And in this, every wood has a different burn rate. You know? It's not, just not easy. This is, uh, you want me to bring it up on this screen? No, I don't set up here already. That, I don't know if that's... He's got it right here. All right. Going on to deal with that. This is a new way to do marquetry with your CNC. And I thought it was cool, and I, the first thing I, I saw it, I bought it. Boom. <laughs> because I'm a tool junkie. <laughs> go full, can you go full screen? Pick, pop full screen there, Bob? Yep. Oh, it's running a cutter. It's running a cutter. This is a shop bot. And it's running a cutter. Uh, 
Now that's another thing. You get on the internet, you see all kinds of YouTube videos. CNC, they're all the same. They're cutting something out. What do you think about it? But yes, I saw one of these things running at the IWF last summer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. Now, somebody referred to this as the marketry o' magic. <laughs> What's that? But it is. It's picking it up about ten thousandths of an inch. Not to clear the wood. Not to clear the wood. Just to bring it up so we don't get chip out. <laughs> Tear up. <coughs> now he has just cut. This guy, uh, I'll tell you a little about this guy. He is, his uh, name is Sean. And he has a snowboard company. He's in, uh, I think, Colorado. And <coughs> his snowboards, they do a lot of inlays of snowboards. They're pretty fancy. And basically it's plastic and the different things. But he wanted a way of doing his inlays quicker. So he came up with this tool. And lo and behold, you can use it for wood. I should have brought some in. I've, I did some foam board with it. But I've not done any marketry with it. I bought it from marketry. I haven't done any marketry with it. <laughs> it's you always, because something else, you never know. I had a customer who needed some giant letters. So I use this to cut out the foam board. It's already paid for. How deep will that cut? Quarter of an inch. He has two models, one an eighth of an inch, one a quarter of an inch. Uh, this one, uh, the radius on the, right now, he's, he's working on uh, some software. He's got a, uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet that changes it. But you, basically you need uh, to do with this one, an eighth of an inch radius on the corners. The, the, the other one, a sixteenth of an inch radius. But they're working on trying to raise that enough to give you a sharp corner. But this is it. If you, if you want to so pass around. a special spindle which works like a spindle. It's just a bearing. That's all it is. It's just a bearing. Oh, it's just dragging. And it's just dragging. Oh, so it's that's all it's doing. It? it looks like it's really... Oh, do, 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 do. It's just dragging it. But what it does is if, you, if that's 20 thousandths, he's got, got, that, uh, got it set where, where it makes the turn, it brings it up 10 thousandths. Is he not cutting it follows or cutting them individually? Individually. individually. <laughs> you just saw it. How many did he just do there in three minutes, George? Like half a dozen of them in three minutes? This is, yeah, here's, the, here's, the, here's one caveat with this, is you have to know exactly where you're starting this cut, and you have to orient this blade. You've got to know where it's going to come down, and know where you're, and you, all you got to do is look at your software, and it's going to tell you your, your start point. So you're just going to orient that blade to whatever that is, and then there it goes. But if you want to see this, it's, the blade is in it, you got to be really careful. But all it is, is just a, a bearing with a holder at the right angle to put that tip in the right spot. Cool. What's he charge for that? Uh, $229. Well, all the turning is done by that bearing. Just the precision bearings inside. There's no slop in there. Any, any lateral force on that causes the cutter to turn. Turn. Yeah, you know, the cutter so turn. When you move sideways, really cool. <laughs> it'll cause that to rotate. Correct. Yeah. Right. So he's just doing it, raising it, and it's turning. So it's just not. Well, that's you don't have the back of the blade trying to work against the front. But that's why you can't raise it completely clear of the work or right. turn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If it was raise it too much. much. <laughs> so vinyl cutters basically do the same thing. So this is really just a takeoff on a vinyl cutter, but they're a little more sophisticated. Hmm. What was the machine cost wanna... on that? What's that? What was the machine cost on that? The machine? Yeah. My shop bot. That mounts in the shop bot. Yeah, this mounts in the router in the shop bot. And the router just doesn't get turned on? No, the router yeah. turns full speed. No. What would the router be on? The router's off. It wouldn't. Turn. No, I thought, I thought router's, no, the router's off. It could be a, st a static collet. You'd be surprised that my, my wife 
I got here this little tool for Christmas. It's uh, called a Cricut. And it cuts yes, paper right. like that. Yep. Right. Pretty darn right. good. Yep. I don't know if it would cut. It almost uh, works. Like it it probably yeah. wouldn't cut. It would. No, and this, this it's just shows you this. I've looked if at you, it to do, to do that. Yeah. You buy a router. A shock, again. Again. Buy the biggest you can because you just don't know what's going to come through the door. You don't know what the future holds. But on these, there's also for the routers, there's a, somebody sells a drag knife where you can do uh, engraving. It's not a drag knife, a, a, a diamond drag tool for doing engraving on brass. Uh, there are people that sell pens. So you can use it as a giant plotter. You know, and you know, you, maybe you want to... Uh, hold down, you got a, a project, you want you figure out how you're going to hold it down, you want to hold it down with screws, you can put the pen in there and just have to go and mark where those holes are going to be, run your screws down in your table to hold it. So there's, there's a lot of different things. So any other questions? We're getting on 10 o'clock here already. If you look with a magnifier, do 90 degree turns really get torn by this blade as it's trying to pivot? Again, in wood, you know, if, uh, you talk your Paul Search thing. Mm -hmm. you, if you see his videos, it's very easy to, to fix wood. He takes that chisel and he just... Yeah, but I mean, and, assuming that this is doing all the cutting... Right. At the 90 degree corner, is that cut complete and is the cut... No, complete? then that's what he's working on a post-processor to help with that. Some, But right now, you're going to have a radius. You can't have a sharp corner. Okay. Oh, so you do, you have to drag it in right. the curve. And again, it, it, we're back to the same thing. Is Mickey doing chip carving with his hands and his brain as opposed to a machine doing it? You know? Jane is going to cut that nice and tight. Bob is going to cut that nice and tight. These are the compromises you get with a machine. It enables a lot more people to, machine enables a lot more people to do Similar things to like Mickey does. They're not ever going to what he can do. But for the uninformed, it's going to look the same. We know it's different. Yeah, but it's the same with this and the same with the marketry. She knows exactly what's, how to do this or you know, what it should look like. Most people don't. And so that's your trade-off. There's always a trade-off. Well, when you cut something with a router bit, you have what they call climbing and plowing. Right. Climb cutter. Right. And in the software, you can you can set that. You can you can tell it. The software, the algorithms in the software, pretty much is going to do that for you. But let's just uh, uh, real quickly. Anybody still have any interest, or you want to leave? We want to give away the hats here, or what do we want to do? I don't want to keep you here if you don't want to be here. Oh, we got a few minutes. Go ahead and do it. Okay. Let's just take. The software, wait, you got that up there? Let's just draw a star, okay? And now we want to machine that star. We're going to go to Create Tool Path, and we're going to cut it out of the material. Which program are you using to draw that? This is, uh, this is my CAD CAM program. It's called Profile Lab. And we're not going to do it to clean up. We're not going to do a flange. We're going to do a basic cut. The basic cut, I can also do inlays. You see right here? And I can set the offset in my, my, uh, my program here. But let's just say we're going to cut out that star. And we'll use, uh, let's, let's use a quarter inch bit. We're going to cut it out. It's three quarters of an inch. Uh, so, and because of the tool I already have in here, this tool is there's a tool library. I guess I could show you the tool library. Uh, it's got a, a lot of pre-programmed things in it. Or, uh, like when I did that little thing for Mickey, Mickey yesterday, I used a CMT bit. So I just created a profile for that CMT 60 degree bit to do that marketry. And I added, and just fill in the blank and tell you what it is. Uh, so anyways, the, the, it already, the program already has these specifications in here, what each tool is going to do. 
Okay, and so it knows the size, it knows the angle. Uh, you know, you'll notice on this, this one. What about this, Tommy? Plasma. <laughs> Oxyacetylene. And you set whatever you want. Wow. And laser. And so you can set your curve width. You can do all this right from in this program. So it's, it's really a powerful program. Uh, but anyways, all we're going to do, we're, let's say we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. And it knows, it's already, that, that bit that I'm going to use will only cut uh, 0.740 deep. And I just told it I want to cut it three quarters of an inch. So it's automatically going to do two passes. You know, you, it's, it's really this easy. You don't have to think. Uh, I'm going to tell it on my, my feed rate. I might put 0.6. Plunge rate's okay. If I had a spindle, I could tell it what RPM. I don't have any. I don't have a spindle, so I'm just going to delete that. And if I wanted to uh, cut this out of something, this program calls it bridges. Some programs call them tabs. I can uh, select. I generally this is when I, I usually like a triangle. I'll tell it what height, what length, how many I want, or let's say I want. Uh, you know, one every uh, every two inches or inch and a half. Oh, is that so it doesn't fall out? Yeah. yeah. But also, too, the, you know, the main station. I can create this bridge and then I, I click this one, and it, after it cuts everything out, it's going to come back and just cut those tabs out. You know, it's that, it's that easy. So we're just going to go with a basic cut. And uh, it that, is now where that becomes real important is if you're cutting something with a laser, you know, you got this little tiny part, you got all this air moving inside the cabinet and so forth, and you you get all done with this part that well, took so you about eight or nine minutes, then you hear it go tickle, tickle, tickle through the <laughs> yeah, through the vacuum system. All right, so now here's our star. We've added the uh, the tool path, and uh, I can. Show the tool diameter. That's one thing I can do. And I'm going to do. I'm going to go in, and you can see I'm going to use a, a quarter inch bit. So what's going to happen? I'm not going to get in that corner. I can then redo it real quickly and see. Oh, I'm going to use a sixteenth inch and see how tight I'm going to get. So anyway, you can see all these types of things. Uh, no, will this program do a tool path simulation? Oh yeah, they all they all do that. They all do that. Yeah. Uh, but here here's the power of the CNC. You know what? I want to give him a hand. Hey Jimmy. Hey Jimmy. You get a hat. You won. You won the first hat. How'd I do that? How, how'd you do that? Because I'll tell you why. Because sometimes I gotta sit behind you back here in the glare. I'm always teasing Jimmy when I send him to be sitting behind. He's going on the hats pretty quick. Yeah, real quick. <laughs> i got to make sure Jimmy has a hat. Did you bring enough hats here? Yeah. No. All right. So, glare. And I, I know he, he, he doesn't do the More CNC stuff. And you got Anyways, he, let's, I, I, don't, I don't have this set up because I just loaded this on the thing yesterday. Let's say I'm, you know, I've done my, my drawing. Um, How many how many stars do I want to make? Let's say I want to make uh, twenty-five. Eh, Fifty-two. Fifty-two. How about that? There they are. Now, all I got to do. Uh, yeah, you can do anything you want with it, but. Not only has it duplicated what I. Uh, is this one for the laser or the router? This, this you could use this for for. Well, actually, this is for the the router, but 
it's already now calculated that toolpath for 52 of these things, and you can see all the um, the toolpaths and the, where it's going to go. It tells you which one it's going to cut first. If you use it for and the laser, quick. if you use it for the laser, it needs to be more intense on the outside, so it can cut it all the way. Laser is a little bit different. All right. I, uh, well, I'm just saying, if you had like a picture you wanted to put on there, it would not be as intense there as it would be on the outside. If you do that all in one pass. Well, I don't know what you mean. I'm, lo I'm lost. Okay, the, the things that Paul makes for that we put on the bottom of our work that we do. You know, you've got something printed on it, and then you have the outside that cuts One's out. cut and one's rastered, yeah. Right. Now, do one's you great. do that as the same pass, or do you have to do separate passes for those? You can do that in one pass. Okay. But it's two different steps. He does all the raster stuff first, and then it comes back and does all the cutting. Stuff. But now if he's going to do thicker wood, that's a different story. Now he's going to have to refocus. Yeah. So it's all an experience. Uh, so this is for the router, and it's basically the, 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 uh, the uh, laser is basically the same. Well, Ralph, what does that program you showed us there, what does that cost? The basic programs, I, I, I don't even know anymore. I think I got between three and 4000 in it. But it's long ago paid for itself. Because it, it, I use it for a drawing program, and it, I, I use it for my vinyl cutter. It, it just, otherwise, I'd have to buy another program for the vinyl cutter. This one does, you know, I use it for all of them. And actually, that's where this company started was. Uh, vinyl cutters, and then they got into engravers, and then then C, uh, CNC routers. Didn't I see plasma too? Plasma, yeah, plasma, and uh, uh, this is this this is they all what I what I like in the software is I'm a, like I said to begin with I'm a, I started learning Corel Draw. Corel Draw has a, a certain user interface. And the programs that I use for the laser and uh, the ShopBot have a very similar user interface. So it's easy to learn these other programs. Some of these uh, uh, newer programs like uh, VCarve and ArcCam I don't use, obviously. Uh, but VCarve, I downloaded the, uh, the trial version the other day. And it's got a different user interface. And it, it's just not me. This is what I've learned. This is easy for me to use. So depending on what you're going to do, user user interfaces a lot. But uh, so I'm able to get up and moving really quickly with this. Uh, basically, all, all we're going to do here is we're going to take a uh, we're we'll make something in Corel. Okay, let's see y'all later. <laughs> and I, I, I've imported, I've done the, done the drawing in Corel. I've imported these, and now they're all, because they're all the same color, I've got uh, the layer that I've got, you work in layers. Uh, I'm going to cut it, and this is, I'm going to set my speed. I'm going to set if the machine is blowing the air assist, and I'm going to tell it whether I'm going to cut it, I'm going to scan it. Or I'm just going to cut it with dots. I, I adjust my power. Uh, and that's basically it. I do this, and I'm done. It's that, it's that quick. Now, what did you make those? But those are Christmas ornaments. Oh, okay. About eight holes for each one. What's that? Yeah, and then these will probably take, you know, less than a minute each time. So... Anyways, I guess that's about it. I'm sorry the presentation really didn't go the way I thought it would go today. But uh, let's, let's go.